Now, from Fayetteville, high on the hill, this is the Pig Trail. Welcome into another special edition of the Pig Trail Show and happy 4th of July everyone. But tonight we are focusing on the newest additions to the Arkansas football team and we have a number of exclusive interviews with some of the players as well. But let's go ahead and bring in the rest of our team. We got Mike Irwin and Nick Petriccioni in the house and guys, let's discuss some of the young talent that we were able to see in the spring. Mike, who are some guys that you were watching during that spring game? Well, Tara, the freshman who probably caught my eye the most this past spring was Rocket Sanders. This young man was a receiver, a running back, and a linebacker at Rock Ledge High School in Florida. Kendall Bryles used him ending up as a running back. He was, he was big last spring. He's even bigger now, I'm guessing, about 6'2", 230. Sanders may yet end up as a linebacker, but he's got good quickness and cutting ability for his size, found some holes when they weren't there. Uh, he'd be a good power back to complement the hog speed backs. Now, an, uh, another interesting freshman is quarterback Lucas Coley. He's a run pass guy, and at 6'2", 215, I like his size. If a quarterback is going to run on purpose, he needs the size to take some hits and not break. I also like the fact that he doesn't just take off and run if he doesn't immediately spot an open receiver. This young man will scramble under pressure, but he's looking to throw first. And even though he's a sophomore transfer, I also feel like I need to mention Tyke Scrawford. He was withheld from scrimmages and the spring game, I think maybe as a precaution. But the coaches know what he can do. At 6'5", 350, he's a typical massive Sam Pittman offensive tackle. In the few practices that he participated in, he manhandled some of the D linemen. It looks like he's almost certainly going to start this fall. My eyes on that wide receiver room. It looks a little bit different this year with the departure of Mike Woods, but you still have some guys like Traylon Burks, Trey Knox coming back. But there's going to be some new guys needing to step up, and I think one of those could be freshman wide receiver Keetron Jackson, a consensus four-star recruit, the 21st best receiver in his class by 24-7 sports. He really impressed me in the spring scrimmages with his speed and route running ability. He had offered some things like Alabama, LSU, but he chose Arkansas. And he's got the physical tool to make a big splash for the Hogs. And the next wide out I'm looking at is Jaden Wilson, another true freshman from Texas, 6'3", a three-star recruit. But he still has solid speed, and he's a great deep threat moving forward. More of a dark horse, but he could carve out a small role this season. Yeah, those are all great picks, guys, so far. But one guy that I was watching from the spring was Chris Paul Jr., or as some of his teammates call him, Chris Poo Paul is the nickname that he goes by. The linebacker had a solid showing in the red-white game, ending the day with a game-high eight tackles, and three of those were unassisted. Not really sure exactly he'll get a ton of game time this season, but I do think that we'll definitely see him because this is a guy that can grow to be a very talented part of the Hogs in the future. Cameron Little, though, is another guy to look for. I know it's not exactly glamorous to talk about a kicker, but he will have to step up this season for Arkansas because let's be real. The Hogs haven't had a reliable kicker since Connor Limpert and Little was the number one kicker prospect in the nation for the class of 2021. So I think we've all got our fingers crossed that he lives up to the height. But I do have to say my honorable mention has got to go to A.J. Green. Guys, I know that we didn't get to see him in the spring, but I think that he is a very talented running back. And all of your picks, though, were great. Do you guys think that that 2021 class and any of the incoming freshmen really can make an immediate impact for the Hogs, though? You know, an impact as a class, probably not. But will one or two freshmen make an impact? Probably. Uh, with Mike Woods transferring mm -hmm. to Oklahoma, I would say that Keetron Jackson has a very good chance of playing a lot at receiver. That's what I think. Jackson's probably the best to make his way onto the stat sheet. But I think Rocket Sanders, as Mike brought up, is a really good pick for this. So he has the same exact measurables as a one. Darren McFadden could be a really good bruiser back. Yeah, Rocket Sanders is going to be a fun guy to watch this upcoming season as well. But these guys we've all mentioned are players that we've been able to see play a little bit. But next, we're going to catch up with some late spring enrollees, including defensive back Chase Lowry, plus the dynamic duo out of Little Rock Parkview, Lena Rogers and Aaron Outley. We'll hear from both of them right after the break. Landon Rogers and Aaron Outley, best friends and a very talented duo on the football field as well. The quarterback and tight end out of the natural state talking with us recently about their decision to become Razorbacks. And Mike Irwin, I know you've got that story for us, Mike. 
You know, Tara, they were teammates at Little Rock Parkview and they will remain teammates at the college level. Both are now on campus at Arkansas. Anxious to take their first step as Razorbacks this summer, what do they want to show their new coaches first? Just coming in ready to work. I mean, I got to help out the O-line on blocking too and I'm with also running the route. So if I open that up on the blocking for the run game, they open up the passing game better for the offense. So that make it more versatile. Come ready to work and just use my athletic ability to the best of my ability. My ability to run and throw and my speed, you know, being in the four fours, you know, it's it opens up a lot more doors. Now there's no way to know how soon each will play, but when they get on the field together, you won't find many guys who know each other's abilities and game better than these two. On the field he's he's very dominant, but quiet. He ain't gonna say nothing to you, but he's gonna rat you up on the field. You know what I'm saying? He's a big dude, and it's like he's for his uh, that size and have that speed in his hands too. Me, especially in the red zone, you gotta prepare for him. I mean, you can't just come in, hey, hold it tight in. No, you're gonna no, you're gonna lose. Landed on the field. He's just a, a quarterback that can run, throw. I mean, he can give you what you want. That will make our offense more open. For his size to be real fast, he reminds me of just like. Like a younger Cam Newton. And where do they want to be when preseason workouts start come August? I want to know the play book like the back of my hand. And, you know, that doesn't necessarily earn me a starting spot. But I mean, me knowing the playbook like the back of my hand, it, I mean, it helps everybody. I just come in and just learn the system. Like, let everything click in together, learn the system, get back to 100%. Any message for Hog fans? Man, it's Woo Pig all day, man. Yeah, here we come. <laughs> yeah, you got to love that. Woo Pig, here we come. Now, I don't know if either one of those guys will play this season, yeah. but they will have an impact here at some point. Committed in-state players with the talent those two have, come on, they'll play. <laughs> yeah, and a young Cam Newton, it's not a bad comparison right there as well. <laughs> but one challenge that pretty much every recruit in this class had to face was the recruiting process. And yes, they got to do everything from home, which I guess might have been nice, but they were they weren't able to meet anyone in person. They weren't able to visit campuses before committing. And when you're trying to make one of the biggest decisions in your life up to this point, that makes things even more difficult. But Chase Lowry, a defensive back out of Frisco, Texas, says that he found a way to turn that into a positive. It, it helped more, I would say. The good thing about it is, like, I had to do my actual research, like, into every school that, like, I was consider, uh, considering. I had to do, like, my own research to make sure it was, like, it was for me. The moment he knew Arkansas was for him was during a vacation to Florida with a friend. His grandparents, they went to Arkansas. It was, like, it, it must have been fair. So they went to Arkansas. I met on the beach. I met these two kids, who uh, one who used to go to Arkansas. They are just all telling me how they loved it. I talked to the commits, and they are all, like, we were all on the same page of trying to rebuild something. Lowry's skills on the field will definitely help with the rebuilding process at Arkansas, but it's his preparation off the field that he says is most important. Before we play any team, whoever I was going against, just watch their tendencies, what they're going to do, how they get, like, certain plays like how, like if they come off the line this way like what route they usually run and when he's not studying film Lowry says he likes to study poetry but how exactly did he get interested in that to be honest I have no idea it was just something like that came kind of easy to me and then like it got like I was good at it but then also like I enjoyed actually like when I it would come like that it's like I can make a poem like on the spot it would come easy but like, I enjoyed doing it so maybe Lowry will one day be giving pregame speeches with some of his own poetry, but his main focus is to be a part of the turnaround at Arkansas. Our goal as a uh, class was you trying to win an SEC championship at the end before we leave. Whether that's three years or four years, at the end of the day, and just by off of that, it helps Arkansas on the whole to just build it up because we win big games. More, you see more recruits see you, and everything just helps. Well, as a senior in high school, Lowry had 26 tackles, four interceptions, one pass breakup, one fumble recovery, and one forced fumble, all in just seven games. Excited to see him here on campus. But we're about to take a quick break, so don't go anywhere, though, because we are about to introduce you to two players with incredible personalities and, of course, incredible skills on the field. Defensive lineman Cameron Ball and offensive lineman Cole Carson. Those exclusive interviews right after the break.
Cameron Ball was one of Arkansas's earliest and most heavily recruited targets in this year's class. He was a two way player in high school, but he's going to play defensive line for the Razorbacks. And when discussing why he chose to come to Arkansas, we're staying somewhere close to home, like going to Georgia Tech or something. Ball said that it's because of how real this Arkansas staff was with him, letting him know that even though he is such a highly touted player, he still got a long way to go. I, I come from I come from working, working for everything I got, like all those uh, offers I received and all the accolades I, I had to work for. It. And, and now I just have to work even harder to, to be where I want to be. And where he wants to be is at Arkansas, even though he had plenty of other offers. I had all these offers. Everybody thought it was cool and all, but you have to have like, you got to make time for everything because, you know, you got to, instead of going there, you got to deal with the, the virtual visits, phone calls. If you don't answer a, a call from a coach, they think you're not messing with them, then they'll take your scholarship. And but Sam Pittman always wanted ball on his team, even when he wasn't at Arkansas. Coach Pittman. He was recruiting me at the University of Georgia when he was there, and he was about to offer me, but then he had went to Arkansas. So he and Pittman already had a great relationship, but now Ball is building a bond with Jermile Ashley. That, that, that's my dog. Like, ever since uh, um, he had took over the new defensive line uh, po uh, coach position, he has been nothing but real with me. He's telling me what to expect. He's just giving me the real. Like, he's not sugarcoating anything when it's going to get there. When, when I get there, he, he's just telling me how it's going to be and how it is, and I'm just going to put in the work, and I like that. But Ball says that the best coach he's ever had is his dad. He's retired from coaching now because he wanted to just mainly focus on me. Mm -hmm. But uh, ever since I was ever since I was young, he got me into football. It's been nothing but tough loves, you know, smiles and frowns. But throughout it all, he's probably like the biggest reason why I'm where I am today. Ball is definitely eager to get on the field this fall, but coming from Atlanta, Georgia, he's also excited to explore the natural state. I'm into the hunting and, and, and all the just, you know, just going outside, having fun. I'm just used to everybody standing in the house around here, and I, I want to get out and hunt and explore all, all of those things. And who knows? Maybe one day the 6'5", 300-pound lineman will get a chance to throw a touchdown for the Razorbacks, just like he did in high school. Okay. I was trying I was trying out to play quarterback in high school and then offensive line coach was like, Bro, you're too big. You just belong on the sled. And he said, Come <laughs> on over here to the sled. But my junior year, I threw a touchdown in the game though. <laughs> and I am so disappointed that I could not find that video of him throwing a touchdown. Cameron Ball just has such a huge personality and such a fun time talking with him. But there is another guy who was so enjoyable to speak with. So let's switch sides of the ball a little bit and welcome in Nick again to introduce us to one of the newest members of the Razorbacks offensive line. Tara, the saying goes, it all starts up front, right? And the focus of this Arkansas team this season, as well as for years to come, is building the strongest offensive line you can. So Sam Pittman went farm tough, bringing in Cole Carson from Texas. I've been playing football since I was in the second grade or from in the Pee Wee days. Growing up in Cut Hand, Texas, the thought of playing big time football wasn't always in Cole Carson's mind. I kind of started out, you know, it was just fun and games playing football with everyone else in elementary. But then when I got to be a freshman, I was like thinking, well, this could be a real deal. I, I could probably go play for my local or our local Division Two team in Commerce here. And then uh, when I got to the end of my junior year, I started getting them offers from everyone in the SEC, and I was thinking, dang, this is a, this is big time. The 6'5", 290-pound, three-star offensive lineman easily attracted bigger fish than his local D2 school from up the road. Carson had offers from places like Auburn, Baylor, and Ole Miss, but chose to come to Arkansas, and the Razorbacks are getting a tough Texan. I have a main streak when it gets on the football field. I've always heard that all the past four years now that I'm uh, everyone else says, man, Cole Carson, he sure is the nicest guy, but when he gets on the football field, he just turns into a different person. And Carson knows how to work hard each day from his experience co-owning a ranch. Oh, me and my granddad, we, we cooperate a 400 acre uh, cattle ranch out here outside of Parksville. And we run a uh, Brahmin and F1 cattle and do, uh, I've, I spent most of my life working there for him doing different stuff. And, uh, been working there every summer, you know, come and work after school every day, and it's, it's, it's great. It's a great deal. But he also wants to work hard at Arkansas to achieve his ultimate goal. Just getting to play in the best uh, conference there is and getting to have the best competition every week and 
um, getting to start as fast as you can gives you the best chance to make it to the NFL. Terry, you listen to Cole Carson. You really just can't help but smile, right? Yeah. I could easily see this guy becoming a fan favorite very quickly yeah. here in Fayetteville. I mean, 400 acres as well. Woo. Yeah. That's a, that sounds like a lot of work <laughs> as well as doing school and football and everything else he had on his plate. He won't shy away from it, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I mean, without a doubt, I think you're right. He's already a fan favorite, definitely a favorite of mine. Nick, thank you so much for that. But we've introduced you to some of the talented newcomers for this Arkansas team. But now after the break, our recruiting insider, Otis Kirk joins me to give an in-depth breakdown of the 2021 class and how they can help the Razorbacks this season. Welcome back to our special edition of the Pig Trail Show. Our recruiting insider Otis Kirk is joining me right now to talk a little bit about this 2021 freshman class that Arkansas has brought in. Are there any guys that even though they're all talented, they might not get a lot of game time, but who are some guys that you could actually see making an immediate impact? I mean, Rocky Sanders could help. I think here Dominic Johnson one will have to be that big back that Sam likes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if both of them will play, but I think one of the other will, and I, that'll be determined in practice. Uh, I think AJ Green will play there. I, I think AJ Green's going to play. I think he's great. With Mike Woods leaving, I look for those all all three of the receivers was four, but I look for uh, Keytron, Jaden, and Bryce all all to get a chance out there at receiver because you lost you lost your number two receiver and you got Davion Moore and other kids going to step and you know you got kids that can step up but from a freshman standpoint I think more, at least one of them probably is going to play now maybe two of them will have to so I, if that makes sense yeah. I mean, you lost one, so I think you I think they always have one probably penciled in to play maybe two it could be all three of them play I mean those guys are talented and they're all three is going to help Arkansas um uh, Cameron Ball, we didn't really talk about. I didn't. I say we. I didn't talk about him like I should have. He's big time. I I love him on the defensive line. I can see Cam Ball getting some uh, action. I think it's important that Tykees Crawford comes back healthy in the fall. I, I think that kid. He may be the most talented kid in this class. I mean, he was great in high school. He went out to Charlotte and started. Oh, all but one or two games, I believe. They played. They, they had abbreviated schedule because of COVID. But I think he started most of the game. Ty Keys could really help them on the offensive line. Um, Paul, I think, will play some linebacker. I really do. I think Marcus, Marco Avent may need to red shirt. He was banged up in the spring, got behind a little bit. But I think Paul is very capable. Johnson at safety, we've talked about him. I think the two cornerbacks, Keon and, and Chris Lowry, I think they're capable of playing. And I, I, Jermaine could, Jermaine Hamilton Jordan, but he may need to. Uh, he's moving, transferring, in, transitioning over from linebacker to safety. It might benefit him to redshirt, but maybe not. That'll be determined. I'm just saying, you know, get bigger in the weight room and stuff. But, but hey, if he's one of the better players, they'll play. And they, they showed that last year. They, they played walk-ons ahead of scholarship players because if that's who they felt like would give them the best chance to win. And that's impressive when a coaching staff will do that. But I think tied in, their, their numbers are down in that room. And, coach, uh, you know, I, I think coaches could see could rush him along a little bit there, you know. It'll be interesting to see if, uh, if uh, one of the two quarterbacks might make a push for the third spot there to start out. Because I think it's going to start out, I think it's going to be KJ, then Malik. And then number three is is open, and it could be be one of the uh, freshmen, or it could be John Stephen, or it could be Cade Renfro. So that spot, the number three spot there, and that's important. And so people say, well, the number three quarterback in their place. Well, one injury and he's number two. Yeah. So that's why it is it is important, and that's a position that we've seen. You saw what KJ did at Missouri when Felipe went down. That's why it's so important to have this next man up mentality. Oh, all right, Otis. A lot of great information there. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. Really appreciate it. But we are going to be back with more right after the break. Welcome back to the Pig Trail Show. We are going to wrap things up tonight by taking a look ahead at this upcoming season. And guys, I'm curious what you're watching for from this Arkansas team. What are some areas that you want to see some improvement? Mike, you want to get us started? Well, you got to start at quarterback because honestly, if KJ Jefferson doesn't get it done, mm -hmm. I don't know what's there behind him. There's just too much inexperience behind him. So he's the guy. Uh, he did make some, some great strides during the spring. He looked a lot better 
in the last couple of scrimmages in the spring game than what we saw earlier. So he did improve. But then he's also going to need some help. He's going to need some help from the offensive line. Mm -hmm. If you go back and look at Sam Pittman when he was here as offensive line coach, there was a big difference from year one to year two under Pittman with the offensive line. And I think that's what we're going to see right off the bat with this old line. I think it's going to be a lot better than it was last year. And then in year three, it was really a, a noticeable difference. So we're in year two of that offensive line change under Sam Pittman, and believe me, he's overseeing that. He's not coaching it, but he's, he's going to see it improve. So I think those two things are what I'm looking for. Yeah, Nick, what about you? I switch it up and go to the defensive line because that was one thing Pittman was yeah. pressuring through the scrimmages in the spring was we have to see these guys, the front seven specifically, just get to the quarterback and be able to create pressure. And they did that in a couple of scrimmages, but they're bringing in talents like John Ridgway, number yeah. 99, a big guy out of Illinois State, took the Redbirds up to a top program in the FCS. So I think a big focus of this year is going to be can you pressure quarterbacks? Yeah, I agree with both of those. I think I'd have to go with the offensive line, mainly just because because of Tykes Crawford. I saw him straight up manhandle some dudes in practice a couple times. So excited to see him out there on the field. Big question, guys. Does Arkansas make a bowl game this year? Yes? No? Uh, yes, I, yeah, I think so. They got a tough schedule, but I think so. Yes, okay. We're going to go with yes. I like that. All right. For Mike Irwin and Nick Petrichoni, I am Tara Talmadge. That's going to wrap it up for our Pig Trail show. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope everyone has a great rest of their evening.